the Hawaiian dance. Yeah. I am thinking we should do something like that again. Thing, right? Uh, because we, the, the men during that show was the one who stole the audience uh, attention. So we we won that sort of uh, yeah. So I think maybe uh, Dr. Erin, you can also set the, the entertainment from our club. And then we'll see. Huh? Just touch on the heading itself. The details are late, uh, according to, to to explain to the club. We decide on a fellowship camp. Mm -hmm. At Baptist Church, at Baptist uh, uh, Retreat Center. Okay. There. So the other day, uh, it went down to about 3,000. It's now almost, uh, uh, almost wiped out, I would say. But then he has now, from an unknown disease, Sabah has now become to be one of the major killers. Now, when a person gets dengue, uh, usually they don't come to us saying that I get dengue. They come with fever. So fever is a common problem faced by everyone. The body temperature more than 37 and then most of the time fever get better. Okay, you don't even need to see a doctor. Most of your fevers, you got a bit of flu, cough, you actually get better on your own. Some of the patients now then, obviously it's being a government sector and I was working as a consultant, so I never used to see common cases. Common cases, I used to see the most difficult cases. But now that in the private sector, I'm seeing common cases. And sometimes, patients come to me. I have had patients come to see me. They say they got fever, and they come to see a specialist. And I, when I see it, I realize that actually their fever is really nothing serious. They actually going to get better. In fact, some of them claim they are already better already. So it makes it very difficult for us when someone comes to you a problem and God or nature has already solved their problem, you know. You see? And I sort of thinking, what medicine am I going to give you? You actually don't need any medicine. You know? So it's a bit difficult because then they'll go and there and saw a specialist, they say, no, then you go back home, drink some water and don't sleep. Right? So, but the, my point is, people are usually self limiting, it gets better on its own. But then, there are, of course, there are also life-threatening causes of fever that cannot be missed. That means to say, you can actually have a fever, although, so, now, the thing is, the Brazil Zika actually came from Asia also. It originally came from Asia also. You see? So, it is, they got Zika, they actually came from us, but they got a big outbreak. So, where did they get it from? Originally from Asia. And now, we are getting back, getting it back from them. So, um, I think your question is whether what happens in Brazil can also happen here or not. Whether the same, you know, the outbreak, outbreak and then it causes the microcaphaly can also occur here. The answer is yes. But is it necessarily the same? We do not know actually. Because there are other, actually other factors also that are involved in, in why a baby would become microcaphaly. You know? For instance, let me ask you, if every baby gets infected, why some get microcaphaly? Small, some the few get, but a vast proportion don't get. What is it that 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 vast, vast proportion doesn't have or disproportion has that gets it? It's all genetics, you know. So they need they need a few things before something happens. I'm just about to comment that the microcephaly I actually seen a long time ago, which is good. Yeah. So it's is it definitely Zika or something? Yes, it's very hard to see. We are actually infected by Zika but we don't know. Yes. Yes. And what if we are infected and then we have what yeah, we're pregnant? Will no, it no, if you I think what you mean is you infected before. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're infected before and you don't have the infection, it doesn't mean that you have infection now. It's just that before you are infected. So now you have antibodies to that. So if you get pregnant, no problem. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Zika is a bit difficult to say because uh, for men it can last for six months. It can last. I mean, they don't have the infection, but they still have the virus living in them. It, and females they got eight weeks. So it's six months. Ten years is seven months. That's what they say. Hmm. Okay, so we take a um, few more questions before we wrap things up. Anyone? Any more? No? Can I just uh, catch up? Not about this too. Malaria, they have, they may be a drug coming in in the near future. A new drug? Vaccine, you mean? A vaccine or drug? No. A no, actually, drug. There, actually, there are many. That it is can be used as a prophylactic for treatment and also it's non uh, most probably won't become resistant. No, actually there are quite a few drugs in the pipeline for malaria, you know, a few drugs. Um, so there's not one new drug that's coming out now, you know, there's not one new drug. So there may be about malaria in the vaccine, which we hope, you know, will be successful. Uh, the main reason is because the current anti-malaria that they're using is very good for artisanate and it's becoming resistant. Um, so far, no one has actually been able to come up with a drug or an antibiotic to malaria that doesn't eventually become resistant. You know, the an animals, these viruses have a way of mutating uh, to become resistant by itself. Dr. Timothy, I know that the Rotary Clubs uh, have been thinking of uh, doing some uh, some work uh, project in the tanky, uh, think some of the tanky what awareness or pre uh, prevention. So from your so many years of uh, research experience uh, in tanky, how do you think a uh, NGO like Rotary Club can assist uh, in this area? I think. Everyone, if everyone does their small part, you can't solve the whole problem. But you can, you can, you can contribute a small part towards solving the problem. Such as, and if you, you see, the main problem for dengue is the vector, which is the mosquito. Yeah. Um, so the mosquito, we have you know, to prevent transmission. We need to reduce the number of mosquitoes. How do we do that? I mean, in theory, lah. I'm not saying mm. practical, lah. Reduce their breeding size. Number of places that they breed. Okay, reduce the chance of you getting bitten the bitten by the mosquito, and making sure people are infected with dengue are not in a place where they can actually infect other people. So the first part, reducing the mosquito breeding sites. Um, that is where the, the community comes in. You see, if our if, if our community at the time that simply throws rubbish, okay, we just throw rubbish, and then it collects water, cleans them. Breeding grounds, you know. Um, so the community plays an important role, uh, you know. Companies, uh, people, you know, contract uh, building contractors, uh, development areas. Uh, there's a lot of water collection. That's why it's found in mainly in, in, in cities. So there have to be concerted efforts to to stop all this stuff. So how does Rotary Club come in? What I can think of is. Um, Awareness, like both in, in terms of the whole public, and also awareness uh, among uh, you know building uh, building construction sites, you know people who are education, uh, education, but not only yeah, I mean targeted education, la, You know you can you can just tell uh, the public, but targeted education on on, on community leaders, community leaders. La. I would like to quote the Singapore experience. Uh, Singapore basically is very clean country compared to Malaysia, and the enforcement, the enforcement ego scheme are also very strict. They're leaving fire you five hundred sing if they discover, you know the, some of the area in the, in your house. Uh, found have those going to sleep. But 
their their dengue case also pretty high. No, it's actually quite unlucky. Also, if, if they come to my house, they might find. Yeah, everywhere got a pigeon. You know what I mean. So it's very it's your luck, you know. They come it's everywhere, even a small teaspoon of water alone, the mosquito can can breathe. Mm. breathe. So we do not know whether finding people is a solution. It, it, it can reduce the death. No, not really. You know, even if we find everyone huh. and you find dengue, it's also very hard. I mean, that when you find when you find dengue la, but you can also find people who are throwing rubbish around. La. Mm. They throw things and all that, then you find them, you know. But you want to find them just based on finding dengue. It's it's it's, it's not fair, la, you know. Yeah, it's it's your thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't come to your house and yeah. look in your pot. Yes. <laughs> for dengue, la, it, yeah. fine. You didn't know it rained uh, yeah. two days ago. You can't be checking your pot, right? But if someone comes, if the public officials come and find your house with all this rubbish there, you can never throw properly. They find you for that. Not, not, not because you found dengue, but because of being a, such a little bug. Then, then it makes sense. La. Not for dengue per se, but for general, general cleanliness. La, you know. So you know, dengue can be used as a reason why people should keep their environment clean. La. Because not only dengue <laughs> spray, you know, leptospirosis, uh, cholera, all sorts of other diseases. La, you know. So how, I think, have public forums, but targeted pub- public forums, uh, where, whereby you call all people to can actually make a difference. You know, construction engineers, you know, people who run the construction, construction sites. It's actually the same thing. Still dengue and it's like the same. Okay. So, uh, hello, Tim, ladies and gentlemen, we have heard a very 